Here comes the Oat Stepper. Oodie la. G'day football fans and welcome back to episode 14 of our Eric Ten Hag Manchester United rebuild. Here on Dylan on the Ball, this Manchester United side is really turning into... I mean, it's the greatest show on earth. It's the the Harlem Globetrotters of football. I don't know. It's like looking at those average ratings, looking at the goal scorers, the assists, all of that. Just what a squad we're looking at. I'm in a minute after something you know, typical YouTube. I'm going to show you the fixtures, and this is just incredible. Before that, remember to leave us a like. Just leave a like down below. Why not? It's free. It doesn't cost you anything, and it helps me out. Also, a subscription would be incredible. It doesn't cost you anything either. Uh, it, I mean, you can... You don't even have to watch... No, wait. Do watch. Keep watching. Watch all the videos. All of them. Like them. Share them. Do the everything. Whatever. Anyway, moving on. Since you were last here, We've had a mammoth month, and we have been just absolutely incredible. Look at this. Uh, last game was this one against Zebra, Juve up top there, uh, where Adiemi scored a last-minute winner. Since then, we've had eight games, eight wins. It has been absolutely incredible. We'll go through them pretty briefly here. First being Everton, who we dispatched of... 5-1, Leal scoring our first, coupled by Bellingham, one for Rashford, one for Amad Diallo. We absolutely battered them all day. We were, that is, that's just who we are right now. Next up was Arsenal and we thumped them. It's 4-0. We perhaps maybe didn't quite deserve that much of a, you know, flattering scoreline, <laughs> especially having not scored until the 75th minute. But we absolutely slaughtered them. Look at this. Look at the XG and how just all of a sudden it's just like, oh, yeah, here's three goals. Bang. Right at the end there. So Ronaldo getting two. One for Pogba, one for Leao. We then faced Brighton and it was a closer affair. This time it was 3-2 in our favour. We were heavily the better side. Much, much better the, uh, side. 3-2 probably flatters them a little with the late uh, own goal by Harry Maguire, making it look perhaps a little closer than it was. A couple of good goals there for... Karim Adeyemi uh, and one for Pogba there, which ends up being the winner. We then played Watford, a couple of goals from Ronaldo there in the cup. We played Southampton, Karim Adeyemi at the double again. We played Zebra in the Champions League, and that first one was incredible. Some absolute theatre, you know, fantasy football. This time, they couldn't do an absolute sausage. We have absolutely dominated them. We won 4-0, goals from Pogba Bastoni's first of the club, a second for Pogba, and then Ronaldo getting another just a minute after uh, Pogba had grabbed his second. But we absolutely dominated them. We didn't dominate possession, but with our 48% of possession, we had 23 shots to their one. It's absolutely unreal football, just effective football, brilliant football. We've then played Norwich with a penalty from Ronaldo ending up being a winner but Leao getting one he also went off injured in that game um, but he's not out for too long I think somewhere around this region I can't remember which game it was in now um, but uh, Jaden Sancho actually went off injured and he's out for a much more substantial period uh, he I think he tore his yeah ca uh, calf strain there you go um, and also Vina's been out um, and you can you can also see that Frank Kessie's suspended because he's got about 15 yellow cards uh, all up I don't know how he's done that. Um, most recently, we did also play Dinamo Zagreb. They took the lead early on, uh, and then in the second half, we just turned things all the way around. One for Rashford. Rashford then got a great assist uh, for Ronaldo. He sort of beat two players or something and then cut in and played a good through ball. Anyway, um, and then Rashford also grabbed himself a second right at the death, set up by, I think it was Lamar, maybe. But, but another game that we did end up dominating, really. But that is what you've missed since you were last here, looking at our season. It's just been absolutely incredible, hasn't it? Like, even pre-season, like, we lost to Bayern Munich 1-0. Like, that's not horrid. We then just absolutely stonked it, spanking everyone. We've had two draws in the league, and everything else is a win. That, like, I think we're the best team in history, up to this point, anyway. I'm, I'm probably going to eat my words when we go up against West Ham today, who are in third. <laughs> but uh, up to this point, we have been absolutely incredible. Those incredible results, or incredible, I guess, series of results, have left us 
five points ahead in the league with a game in hand, six points ahead in our group with a one game to go. I think we've got Ghent to go. So, look, should be 18 points in theory, but either way, we've already topped our group. We're into the, what's this, the quarterfinals? Yeah, does that make sense? Why is that breaking my brain? Anyway, we're up against QPR in the Carabao Cup, something, someone we should be beating, really. We're, it's... It's all going to plan, really, and I mean, two years for the Eric Ten Hag rebuild, and this is how good they've gotten, we've gotten even. It's madness, it's absolutely incredible. As for our top performers, you can see, you've seen the goals, looking at the ratings though, it's Luke Shaw out on top for some reason, Rafael Varane, Diogo Dallo also been incredible, Vigna previous, or previous, prior to his injury, um, and then Alex Merritt, who's been great in his two appearances apparently. A lot of our backline been incredible, apparently, but when you look at the goals, I mean, everyone's been incredible, really. You'll also see, um, someone wants Cristiano Ronaldo, and, I mean, obviously, who wouldn't if he's still, I mean, he's 38 and he's scoring 14 goals in 13 games, and two appearances off the bench, I should say, but, uh, I mean, if you were to have a guess as to who wants Cristiano Ronaldo, I think Real Madrid's probably up there, isn't it? You know? Like, as far as... Who you would exactly expect to want to bring Ronaldo into their club at this stage? It, it's probably it's, it's Real Madrid, isn't it? Of course they'd take him back. Why wouldn't they? Imagine the merchandise, really. But anyway, enough about uh, what's happened up to this point. Let's get to what you're here for. Let's get to our game today against West Ham in the Premier League. So today's lineup for our trip away to West... What's it called? London Stadium? West Ham Stadium? I can't remember what the bloody stadium is. I'm going to say London Stadium. That's off the top of my head. I, I mean, I should probably know these sorts of things. All I know is that when you play them on FIFA on the next-gen consoles, it's bloody annoying. The amount of bubbles on the bloody screen, it's infuriating. can't stand it. Like, every goal, every kickoff, it's just, you know, it's too much. But the lineup for... Anyway, anyway... Uh, the lineup for this one will be De Gea in goal, a backline of Dallo, Varane, Bastoni, and Shaw. Midfield three of Rice, Fernandez, and Bellingham. On the right, Pedro Neto making a rare appearance, making a rare start. Leao on the left, and Ronaldo up front. A couple of reasons for the sort of, I mean, not rotated at all. Really, it's it's a great lineup. Um, Sancho's out injured, Vina's out injured, Kessie's suspended. So, I mean, those are those are the reasons why you don't see those three people in the lineup. But, I mean, other than that, I mean, it's a very good lineup. Neto's possibly the only one that I'm a little sketchy on, but, you know, we do have Adeyemi and Diallo on the bench who can play on the right wing. Lamar can probably do it too. You know, we've got options. We've got plenty of options. And just with how good we've been, even though I'm, from memory, West Ham are up in third, I'm still very confident going into this one. So let's, uh, let's get through to the lineups. Here we go then. As we look at the two lineups here, it is London Stadium. God. Why would I doubt myself? I should have been confident. Confidence, you know? Back yourself. Back yourself. That's the one. Um, as we look at the lineups here, I'll just remind you guys to please leave a like down below. Subscribe if you're new, if you're into the series, if you want to see how we go in our search, Spencer search, for a Champions League title this season. And uh, if you want to see what, what comes next here on the channel, comment down below. Also, any suggestions you might have for future content. I'm very open to, to what you guys want to hear from me or see from me, I suppose, either way. And uh, just quickly down in the description as well are the social media. So if you want to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all those things, they are down in the description below. And let's kick the heck off and beat West Ham at the London Stadium. Let's bloody do it. We're underway. I'm never happy when we're in our away strip. I saw it when there were you know, the little animations at the start where they're lining up and they're about to get into it. We're in our away strip now, like yellow shorts, I guess, navy top. I'm never a fan of it, but hopefully it's not, you know, a bad luck charm. Is it a, do you call it a bad luck charm or you just call it a, just, anyway, it's like an omen. I don't know. Hopefully it's not that. And we are able to just carry on. Unlike Diogo Dallo, who I'm definitely taking off because we cannot risk that at the moment with the amount of injuries in the wide backs. We're going to bring on Juan Basaka the natural replacement, but that is not a great start, especially we haven't even had a highlight, but all we've done is lost a right back. I suppose it's probably only natural, we're going to give him a nice, a bit of encouragement here. Um, I suppose it's only natural for them to get injured after playing, I mean, the team has had nine fixtures within a month, so it's probably going to happen, isn't it? Uh, luckily, I think we've got 
one, maybe two fixtures before the month or six weeks break for the World Cup. Not that that'll really be... Oh, wow, Pedro Neto nearly scoring. Not, a little, not that that'll be really much of a break. I mean, most of my players will be there playing. Here's a free kick chance, though. Fernandez swinging it in, back post, headed away easily by Suchek. Pedro Neto retrieves, has it out wide, plays back to Wembasaka. Recycling here, Fernandez on the ball, who has been sensational this season, much like Jude Bellingham, who finds our best player, Luke Shaw. We found Leao, we found the, found the back of the net, his 10th goal of the season, we're only, what, two months in now? Three months in? Two? What are we? Oh, who knows? Who cares? Anyway, it's Leao. I also got the notification a couple of games ago that we're about to pay £10 million to uh, AC Milan for the amount of appearances Leao's made for us, which is not ideal, um, but taking the lead 1-0... That's ideal. That's what we signed him for. He's absolutely reaching his potential and he is season in. It's wild. Far from an action-packed first half, this one, but, I mean, going into the break, it seems up 1-0. I will absolutely take that. Don't really mind how they come, as long as we keep on winning. If we can win every game this month, I think I'll cry. Anyway, that's the first half done. They've actually had the better XG somehow, but we are the ones with the lead and the possession and... I mean, we've got, at the end of the day, we've got Ronaldo, uh, and they, no one else does. So, I'm, I'm pretty confident. I'm hoping for a good second half here. And, of course, we're just gonna, we're gonna encourage them. We've gotta, you've gotta keep them happy. That's how you bloody win things. You've gotta keep your dumb players happy. Into the second half, and we are not really doing too much. I mean, it's been quite average, hasn't it? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him a fire up, and we're also gonna make a change. We're going to fire up. Yep. And we're also going to bring on Armad Diallo because I want to change him to a winger and see if we can, you know, just get something different happening. I know he's better. I understand that he's better as an inside forward and as a playmaker or whatever. But I, I want him to get wide and get around the outside because I, I think perhaps with an inside forward, we're crowding it too much and depending on the overlap of the, the wide bat too much maybe. So I'd, I just, I, I, I prefer it with the sort of, not so much balance, but the spacing. That's a, I know it's a basketball term, but the, the spacing, I guess. Uh, if we have at least one of our wingers playing wide. In, that's the theory anyway. I don't know if that actually is how it plays out on Football Manager in this match engine, but that's that's been the theory behind it, and that's what we do with Sancho on the right. Here's a free kick from... Oh, Bruno Fernandes swung it in, hit it to uh, Ronaldo, who blazed it over from, uh, what, six yards out? Something like that. All right, 70 minutes in. Time for another change. Mm, who do we go with this time? Uh, I don't know. Hmm. I think we go Pogba. Pogba has been... Yeah, Pogba's been pretty sensational this season, so we'll bring him on as the Mazala in place of Jude Bellingham, and hopefully he can have a good impact here. As long as we go on and win. That's all that matters. Here is Luke Shaw playing around with the ball, not doing too much with it. Bastoni, who has been absolutely brilliant. Man, is this going to be one of those moves where we pass it around great around the back, but then just blast it forward and Ronaldo's through on goal all, all of a sudden? We'll see. Here's Pogba on the ball. Pogba finds Ronaldo. Ronaldo finds Ahmed Diallo through. Ahmed scores. He might be offside. Oh, I'm not confident. I'm definitely not confident in this one. Come on, son. Come on, son. No! Dang it. Dang it, dang it, dang it. I don't think you'll even see him on the screen here, do you? Oh, yep. Um, yep, yep, that's offside. That's definitely offside. Good signs, though. We did rip right through them there, so... As long as we can carry that on... And stay compact at the back. Solid at the back. That's all that matters. Another highlight here as we approach the 80 minute mark. Oh, a big whiff from Bastoni, who I praised just before. De Gea, big save De Gea, one on one. Was that Vlasic that was through? Big save. Another highlight though, another, what, two minutes later, not even. Here's four, and it looks like it's gonna be a West Ham one. Here's Vlasic on the ball. 
finding Yusuf Demir, who finds Jared Bowen, much like the Amadiallo run. This time it's just a goal though. Oh dear. Is our run coming to an end? Right, that equaliser having gone in, we are going to change things. We are going to go to very attacking because I am not best pleased. A game we should have been better in. We're going to go much more direct. Extremely high tempo. We're going to start running at defence. Transition, distribute to flanks. Um, we're going to press much more often. And we're going to get stuck the heck in. And, I mean, hope for a, a similar story to our, our Zebra equaliser. Here's the goal again. It was very similar to our almost goal from Amadiallo. A nice outside to in run. This time Bowen is on side, finds the inside of the near post and draws them level. They've then gone very defensive, bringing off Lasic for a centre back. And we are hoping, oh no, we've got an, and it's a, it's a defender too. We've got no subs. All right. All right. I'm still happy. All right. So what we're going to do is Bastoni's going out to left back. Declan Rice is going to centre back. And I mean, we're just going to hope that we can still do something with it. I'm, I'm very nervous now that we're going to get absolutely FM'd. I've gone to just support with the Mazala, so hopefully we don't get too caught out in midfield. They've then gone back attacking, back to their 4-2-3-1, seize, trying to seize their opportunity. Here's Bastoni winning the ball high up. Ronaldo going through... Rosed. Good. That's good. Oh, as I record this, they're about to kick off against Melbourne Victory. I'm going to see United in a few days. I'm pumped. I'm absolutely pumped. I'm not a United fan. I'm very much the opposite. Uh, oh no, here's Musa. Oh, why? Do, oh man, this last 15 minutes has been nerve-wracking. Yeah, not a United fan, but I'm in within the next five days, I'm seeing Aston Villa leads. Oh, uh, and Crystal Palace Manchester United. So I'm absolutely pumped. I'm a keen as a been. Oh dang it, man! There, that's the end of the streak. We've won what? 14 in a row, maybe? Something like that, but it's come to an end with a draw away at West Ham. And at the end of the day, we, ju we just weren't good enough. Like, I mean, creating equal amount of chances, but only one shot going on target is pretty dire. Definitely could have been better. Hoping that injury to Luke Shaw isn't too bad, we will see. So, two points dropped, but we are still six points ahead in the Premier League. Not too disappointed at the end of the day. I mean, we went away to a team that's in third and got a point. So, I mean, it's not the worst result. Pretty disappointed in the performance, though. And also, Luke Shaw is... He sprained ankle ligaments. He's out for three to four weeks. That might take him out of the World Cup squad, which I don't really care about. I'm Manchester United. I want to win a Champions League. I don't care about the World Cup, really. But, I mean, it kind of sucks for him, doesn't it? Next video, you will see us go against Chelsea in the Premier League. We've got... Three games, actually, before the World Cup starts. So we've got Ghent in the Champions League, two in the Premier League, Watford and Burnley. We then have uh, some friendlies, probably, apparently, followed by Tottenham, Newcastle, someone in the FA Cup, QPR in the uh, Carabao Cup, which we saw before. And then we're playing Chelsea. It'll be smack bang in the middle of the transfer window. Not sure we'll do too much business, because I think we've spent just about every penny we have. Uh, but, I mean, if Real Madrid come in with a decent offer for Ronaldo, I'm not going to say no, he's 38. And if we can leverage selling Ronaldo into <laughs> getting like Erling Haaland or something, and then at the end of this season I, you know, resign but skip ahead five years, United are going to win everything, man. They're going to win absolutely everything. Crazy. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, I really appreciate it. Make sure to leave us a like down below, subscribe if you enjoyed the video, if you're new around here, leave a comment down below, follow us on the socials, and um, that's it. Um, until next time, when we go again to set the record straight and, and, uh, and try and win our Premier League again, peace. Peace.